Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. But today we are in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, visiting Longwood Gardens, the world-renowned public garden space and uh, conservatory and all kinds of things to see here. Come with me and let's just see what is looking good here on June 20th at Longwood Gardens. Hi there. Oh, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Hi. We're back at Longway Gardens. We need some spitting frogs. <laughs> okay. If that reference escapes you, then maybe go back and watch last year's visit video from Longway Gardens. Dave was all enamored of the spitting fountains. Anyway, we're here at Longway Gardens today. It's a beautiful day. June 20th, the weather couldn't be more perfect. Clear blue sky, about high 70s, and just a lovely day. Uh, we're going to have dinner at the 1906 restaurant. That's the main attraction for us this evening. Um, but before then, we're gonna go over to the Carillon Garden, which is a beautiful shade garden, kind of a mountainside. Lots of ideas for gardening in the shade and beautiful views of a waterfall and a stone tower that holds the bells. It's just a lovely spot, so let's go there. We're slowly making our way over to the Carillon Garden from the main entrance. And they've got some construction going on, some new pathways being paved and various things. So we're walking through the topiary garden, which is a nice lawn with beautiful tall shrubs. I think they're yews um, that they've made their topiaries out of. There's a lot of pretty ones here. And then it also takes us through the rose garden. I mean, if you have to walk out of your way because the pathway is closed, this is a pretty nice way to do it. I'm hoping there's a door over there. Oh, well then. This isn't going to work. Maybe the whole area is off. There's people over there. You just got to get down. Go down into the fountain. This is what I have growing, but mine aren't blue yet. We want to go that way. It smells like manure. You're going to have to go all the way over there and then back that way. Well, it'll be a pleasant walk then, won't it? Longway Gardens is under construction for the next couple of years. They're doing a major renovation and extension of the conservatory. It's going to be fantastic when it's done. It's a bit of a mess before then. The conservatory is under tremendous amount of um, construction. I don't know. We can't really see in there, but the bottom ground level of it is being completely gutted and re-supported, um, and then it'll be refurbished. And there's block... You can't... You can't go out on the promenade area, that terrace up there. And they've blocked off a lot of the far side of the Italian water garden as well. We've changed our plan. We're not going to go over to the Carillon because of the length of the route we would have to take. Our dinner reservation is in about a half an hour. So I think we're going to just pop inside the conservatory for a few minutes and get a short walk through there. I misspoke earlier. It's not the Italian water gardens. It's the main fountain area that you would have to walk around to go over to the Carillon, which is back over that way. But anyway, so much construction happening. Quite an ambitious project. And here's the vision for the new conservatory. Here's the traditional one right here, the old one, the one that we're gonna go into. And then the water lily garden, it used to end there, but now all of this is gonna be new. They still do have greenhouses in the back. But it's going to be quite the expansion project. And then also over here, all of the underpinnings of the old conservatory are being reworked as well. This whole corner filled with all these containers. It looks like banana trees underplanted with cannas. 
very tropical, very bright and sunny.
So it's the quickest pass through the conservatory that we've ever done on any trip to Longwood Gardens. But it's time for our dinner reservation. So here we go. We wanted to have dinner at 1906, which is their fine dining restaurant, and it's really delicious. Uh, the only reservation we could get was for 3 p.m., which is kind of an odd time of day to have dinner, but it actually worked out really well. We arrived at 2.30, we saw a few things before dinner, and now we're going to go see a few things before they close at 6 o'clock. So we don't really have time to see the entire garden today. Um, we're gonna try to focus on the main flower walk and see what we can see from that. And then whatever else we can see is kind of bonus. Um, we were here at the main flower walk last year. I think that they changed their planting plans every season. So we're gonna see how this one is planted up for this summer of 2022. It doesn't look the same to me. No, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's last year it was purple on this section, but it was different plants. Yeah, thematically it's similar. Up to the house. Is it? I don't remember. I don't remember what time of year we were here. I look at grass a lot. I do love purple and silver plantings together. In fact, I do. Yes, indeed. This boxwood is called D runk D-E-E-R-U-N-K. I've never heard of that variety. Angelonia and Dusty Miller. Colchester White. Well, no, time from the beginning of that day restarts, so everything he could have pulled On this side, we have more of the Angelonia and the Dusty Miller, and then we have Adoratum. This is Blue Horizon. I have Blue Planet at home. Oh, we can see here their um, staking methods, which I have started to use at my house as well. I've done my Snapdragons using this method this year. You just put in a bunch of stakes and then make crisscross strings to hold up the plants. Eventually, through the end of the summer, I'm guessing that these stakes will be covered up with foliage and flowers. And then down in front here, we have a hybrid sage. This is Rockin' Blue Suede Shoes, a proven winner's plant, I believe. And the bumblebee is very much enjoying it. the purple section the best. All right, and then we move into a different planting here. This is wishbone flower or terrenia. This is summer wave blue. It's kind of closing up for the evening, it looks like. We're about 4.30, 4.45 in the evening right now. And then in this section, we have more of the salvias. There it looks like there's some status in here. Uh, wavy leaf lavender, mealy cup sage, that's um, salvia. This, you like the Arizona cypress, yeah. blue ice. Yeah, that's really cool. Now, all the trees that they put in this flower walk, they're all temporary. They dig them in and dig them out every season. They won't be here at Christmas when we come back for the Christmas light show. Over here, we have white and blue adoratum mixed together. And in the back, we have 
Oxford and Cambridge Blue uh, Bush. Is that what it says? Oxford and Cambridge Bush is what that says. I'm trying to read this sign. Which is Rothika. I've never heard of that. Looks like Salvia to me. And then these are Fern Podocarpus. I've never seen these plants at any sort of garden center or anything, so it's not like they're readily accessible to the home gardener. But they sure are beautiful here in place. Here's a Senecio angel wings. Bright white silver in the garden, surrounded by Terenia. This looks like um, compact Japanese holly to me, but I don't know. I don't see a tag quite yet. Um, there it is. Huh? It was. I saw a tag back. Did you? More um, status. My status don't look anything like that. I'm guessing that they didn't put one little seedling in a pot. I bet they put like 10 seedlings in a pot and let it grow as one clump. And then here, this looks like Mexican petunias to me. Is that what it is? Yeah. And then here is, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Oh, it's a eucalyptus type. And now we move in the flower walk, we move into the red and pink zone. Actually, probably pink. I think they probably have red somewhere else further down. This is Gomfrina over here, underplanted with something. Copper leaf. Alternanthera, purple prince, is what this under underplanting is. And then, yep, truffle of pink. That's what we have in our home garden. Another proven winner's plant. And then in the back, we've got some zinnias. I bet those are Benary's giant. Some kind. Euphorbia. Surprising. Celosia intermingled with some grasses. This is ruby grass. It's a striking planting, isn't it? And the coleus behind it. And then we move on to Mandevilla. Some gara of some kind. Ballerina rose gara. Zinnias. Super yoga rose zinnias. I was wrong. They're not gunneries. Kiss me over the garden gate. Persicaria orientalis in the back there. I've seen some of these plants at the garden center, but not all of them. Ooh, what's this? Bright pink pom-poms. Lysianthus. So all the cut flower gardeners that I follow grow Lysianthus at great struggle. And I know that I'm not going to try based on how hard they struggle. They do look striking though, don't they? And then it's surrounded by lantana. More back to the Gumprina and the um, Japanese hollies. And the Alternanthera. Ooh, this is an Angelonia of some kind. Is that what that is? I don't know. Caladiums in the back. What are those low growing? They're called Florida Sweetheart. Short stems, roughly all on the ground. Interesting. And then more of the um, salvia and coleus, some short uh, osteospermum. It's very pretty. You look back. Oh, look how striking that purple 
planting is, that pink, pink plantings of that uh, Angelonia. Oh, so nice. And then we move into the orange section here. I thought these were us and Fermo, but they're zinnias. Profusion and zinnia. That's a well-placed tree up there. Look at the staking for this angel trumpet. <laughs> Month or so, you won't be able to see that at all. It'll have grown so large. We'll have to come back in July or August. See how the walk's doing. See how much this is filled in. Before red and orange are not my favorite colors in the garden, and this is why. This flower bed just looks like it's on fire and it makes me feel hot just looking at it. But I do think it's striking for sure. I can see the appeal for people who enjoy these colors. By far the brightest. By far the brightest, yeah. Mexican sunflowers. Fiesta del Sol in the back there, and then in the front there's a red coleus of some kind, and then more red celosia, that's um, Arabona variety. And then down in front looks like some kind of Zinnia Zahara sunburst, and then more of the compact Jas Japanese hollies. Those are, are those soft touch, is that what the tag said that you saw? Soft touch? Don't and then Lantana. Just must make you feel hot. Everything has sun in its name. I know it makes me feel hot, definitely. And this is a common alamanda, South African. South American. Oh, South American. My bad. I misread. Water lily dahlias. I've never heard of that variety. Oh yeah, I have. But I mean, it's not a variety. It's a category. And then some more red coleus. The coleus is reflections. No, ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's a trademark name. I wonder if that is a proven winner's plan as well. I don't know. And then a yellow lantana that's landmark gold. And then here we have some salvia, annual salvia. Roman red. Coleus, color blaze, lime thyme. That's proven winner's plant. I'm surprised. I've never seen so many Proven Winter's Annuals in their gardens before. Maybe they're trialing or something. And then Candelabra Tree or Senna um, in the green in the back there. And then here down in front we have Coxcomb, Celosia, Twisted Orange. Brains. Yeah, they do look like brains. Orange brains. And then behind that, we've got the Honka Dahlia, which isn't blooming yet, as far as I can see. More of the red coleus. And then here we go into the marigolds. Oh, this just makes me feel hot. I feel like I'm sweating already. Tassel flower, English poet. That's what this little guy is Irish here. Poet. Irish poet. Excuse me. What did I say? English poet. Oh. Irish poet. I can't read and talk at the same time. Higher level skills there. And then in the back there, some sort of Rebecca, but I don't know exactly which one. I haven't seen a tag yet. French marigold, Durango gold. And some more coleus, looks like. What is this guy? Blooming. I don't know what that is. I would have pulled it long before it got there. <laughs> it looks like a weed to you. <laughs> That would have come out of the ground. Sorry. My <laughs> bad. Pineapple sage. Golden delicious. That's what this is. This is Am I missing Mullen. something on the other side? Mullane. Mullen. Mullane. How do we say this? Mullane. Mullane. The best in Oh, look at that one. It's curly at the top. 
You would have pulled it, huh? I would have pulled it. My bad. <laughs> oh, and then the big begonias here. Oh, just so hot. <laughs> and then we're sitting here. It's like almost five o'clock on a beautiful day. Sun's at our backs. And I'm a little warm in the sun, but it's a cool breeze. And I just feel hotter just walking along this pathway here. All right, over here we have Gloriosa daisies. These are Rudbeckia herta, an Indian summer. Were you trying to breathe hot on me? Yeah. These are pretty. And then here we're back to some salvias. More of this, what was it, Irish something? This orange little guy here. focus is and then down here we have the white garden which is white and yellow creamy yellow and white and green the angel trumpets they always have angel trumpets in these containers the Koshiana. this is the one that stays just green trumpet cypress gardens variety they're just striking but they grow so big over the season they'll be out and like almost covering the edge of the path here by the end of the summer they bloom all summer long i don't know how they do it the Koshiana lime green is that this that's this one and then some yellow coleus or maybe it's pineapple sage And back there we have some more dahlias, white lightning dahlias. I don't know what that white is back there, some sort of annual flower. Duh, obviously this is the annual flower walk. Here we go, Minoan lace. Marvel of Peru, that's what this green is with the white buds coming on. And then the yellow is coleus, color blaze lime time again. And then, let's see, what are these? White, creamy, white ivory colored uh, zinnias, white wedding zinnias that are interplanted with Lysianthus roseanne green. There's the tags. And there's the plants. And just some impatience, looks like. Can't go wrong, that's what we have. The pink. Yeah, pink Oceana. Yeah. We have flowering tobacco. Yes, we do. They're pink and white did, in did our I, garden. Did I, did I pull them? No, they're the things that fell over when you were burying the drip irrigation. Uh -huh. And they have the pink and maroon colored flowers at the top. Nice. Yeah. And then down here we have some more... Mexican petunias, but these are white. And then more of the zinnias and lysianthus together. And then, then we move on into other gardens. If you walk through there and down the way, you'll find eventually the Italian water garden. I was looking at this oak leaf hydrangea with its beautiful white blossoms, and I was looking for its tag. And I couldn't find it first, but then I did find it, and it's uh, Snow Queen which is beautiful. But as I was searching for this tag for this, I found the tag for this plant, this big, oh, I don't know, what is it? Eight feet tall, 10 feet tall, something like that. Pretty big, maybe eight by 10. And this is winterberry, winter red. I just put a winterberry, winter red in my shrub border. I didn't plan on it getting 10 by 10. We'll have to keep it pruned. All right, we have to come back and see it at night. We're going to have to come back at night. Yeah, we're going to have to come back.
It's like two or three hundred yards down to the end of this meadow. And it's just filled with these little spherical balls of light. We're going to have to come back. And each one has like five or six fiber optic cables feeding it. Yeah, so it'll change color and waves and designs and patterns. And yeah. Got a big electrical box down there. Yeah. And a fiber optic port. It goes all the way down here to those woods over there, which is what, 200, 300 yards? And then it also crosses the pathway and goes up to the hill on the right, on the other side of the pond. It's amazing. These big containers and then just little teeny tiny planting in the top.
Well, it's been a beautiful afternoon slash early evening here at Longwood Gardens. I think we're going to call it a day. They're closing here in about hmm, a half an hour, and that leaves us just enough time to walk through the gift shop. Thank you for coming along with us to Longwood Gardens today. If you live in the Mid-Atlantic area or in Pennsylvania and north, in the northeast really, you should make an effort to come to Longwood Gardens. And if you don't live in the northeast or in the Mid-Atlantic, if you do come on vacation to this part of the country, you should make a trip to Longwood Gardens. If you've never been here before, pick a day where you can spend unlimited time here. There's so much to see. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Thank you for coming along with me, and I will see you in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.